next webisode of Sound Advice, Derek Sivers takes us on a history lesson of how one of the most recognizable songs in all of music was written and rewritten and rewritten. Check it out. I met Smokey Robinson when he came to speak at Berklee College of Music. And I think, did Smokey Robinson write My Girl? Okay, so um, he told the story about My Girl and I think um, he and a co-writer or something like that wrote My Girl and they were trying to get it recorded by somebody or something like that that was in New York. They were living in Detroit. The people that they were pitching it to lived in New York and they flew out to New York to play the, hey, we've got the song, we really believe in it. And they played it for them and the guys went, eh, it's not quite there yet. They flew back to Detroit and spent like another 40 or 50 hours crafting every single note. Well, what if we changed this note? What if we changed that word? And they flew back to New York and played it for them again after two weeks and they were like, better but not quite doing it for us. They flew back to Detroit for another two weeks. They changed the intro, they changed the bridge. They this like, ah, oh, what about that bass line that we put in the, the after the hook? What if we put that as the intro? Boom, 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 boom. Like, oh, that's a good way to start the song, isn't it? Okay, now that I've got sunshine thing, let's make that the opening line. Yeah, okay. Now they went back to New York a third time, played it for them, they're like, oh, that's good. I think we got a hit. So I think a lot of artists, unfortunately, do that thing where they think that whatever the first thing that poured out of their mouth, the first thing that fell under their fingers is how the song has to be. And they forget about the absolutely crucial importance of crafting a song and improving it. You know, it's not sacred. It's not the stone tablets sent down from Mount whatever with Moses or something. It's like everything can be improved. And until every note and every word and every syllable and every chord and every arrangement is, is like perfect, there's always room for improvement, mm. you know? So I think that for most musicians, three hours spent improving your music does a hell of a lot more for your career than three hours spent on MySpace. <laughs> Very valid points. Um, I wanna add to that because I think you're right. I think there are a lot of, there's a lot of music coming at us now, especially now with the internet, and it, it a lot of it not so great. So perfecting your craft, honing your songs, definitely the best way to spend your time. And I've got some delegation tips. Get out your pens. www.entertainmentcareers.net is a fabulous resource for where you artists can connect with people that are looking to work with musicians and work with record labels, which technically most of you own your own record label. Even if you're just a CD Baby artist, it means you are distributed internationally. Put an ad there. Ask for an intern, clear a room out in your house, or meet at a Starbucks and once a week have an intern click on MySpace for you. Delegate that out and get back to your songwriting. Another amazing place to actually build a street team where they can help promote you online is ReverbNation.com. They've got an amazing free street team module. Go check it out. This is Arielle Hyatt and Derek Sivers, Sound Advice. So there you have it. Everything can be improved. Even songs that you think are finished may still have another round left in them. Really, really great advice from Derek about how to take something to the next level. And on the delegation tip, two websites that I would recommend, entertainmentcareers.net, get yourself an intern to help you, and reverbnation.com, get yourself a street team. They've got some amazing modules that you can um, show your fans so that they can help you so that you can take the time to do the things that you like to do and delegate the rest.